What's up? How y'all doing today? CT here and doing a quick recap of Raw uh, August 18th, 2014 edition, which is last night. Uh, let's get right into it. The show starts off with Daniel Bryan's music hits and it's actually Stephanie. And there, anybody should have known that uh, it wasn't going to be Daniel Bryan. So if you follow wrestling very closely at all, you know Daniel Bryan's not supposed to come back for a while. Uh, so it's it's Stephanie McMahon, and she has a shirt on that instead of the Daniel Bryan shirt that says yes 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 it says Steph Steph Steph. You know she comes out uh, mocking Daniel Bryan, gets in the ring basically <clears throat> basically recaps SummerSlam basically says everything that happened. Uh, Nikki Bella comes out and basically tries to explain her actions. You know, Brie Bell comes out, gets in Nikki's face, like, you know, why'd you do this? Blah, blah, blah. And I don't know, uh, I don't think this is really that interesting of a uh, feud. It kind of, I kind of thought it might be at first, but I really don't, I'm really not that interested to see them actually wrestle a match, you know what I mean? But uh, Nikki Bella s smacks Brie Bell, Brie Bell just walks away all sad and whatnot. Um, next big show and Mark Henry face uh, the Wyatts, uh, Harper and Rowan. Uh, not a very good match at all. Big Show, uh, these guys just really need to retire. I like Big Show, I like Mark Henry, and Kane as well. I feel like those are the three guys who have just hung around too long. And, I mean, with you being that big, you're limited in the ring as it is. The only person who's been really big and has been really uh, well-rounded in the ring has been The Undertaker. And these guys are old, and I don't know. I, just, I don't know really what they're hanging around for. But uh, Big Show and Mark Henry win. Mark Henry hits the World's Strongest Slam, and that's it. Uh, then next, uh, Seth. there's a Seth Rollins at Dean Ambrose. Uh, backstage segment where uh, Rollins is talking about how he won and Ambrose comes up and dumps a bucket of uh, ice water with the ice bucket challenge thing I'm sure you've heard about and uh, it throws the bucket at him and they start fighting um, and then there's a segment right after the commercial break where Rollins goes up to Triple H and says basically Ambrose is out of control blah 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 and that uh, Triple H says that he needs to finish him off once and for all and they say he says that there's going to be a match uh, later on tonight between Rollins and Ambrose and the WWE Universe gets to choose the stipulations which is either a cow's fault anywhere a no DQ and a no holds barred which is all basically the same thing so you know whatever uh, <clears throat> Natalia faces Paige. Man, if you watched my recap of of Raw uh, last week, you were probably laughing while you were watching this because I talked about how stupid it is. When how many times have we seen it where either Paige or AJ skips around the ring, and the other one gets distracted who's wrestling the match and gets uh, rolled up and pinned and loses. How many times have we seen it? I swear, it, I think it's happened like the past like five Raws. At least it feels like it. But man, it happened again. And uh, AJ comes out. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why would Why would Paige, like you've seen it a million times. You've had it done to you. You've done it to her. Why wouldn't you say, okay, I'm just going to ignore her this time. I mean, why would I care that AJ is skipping around the ring? You know what I mean? Just wrestle the match. And... Yeah, you get rolled up. I don't understand even how the roll up pin. It's like I said last week. I don't understand well how it's so effective. Okay, it takes you off guard for a second. I mean, if you're going by, you know, in terms of pro wrestling, which is obviously scripted, uh, it could catch you off guard for a second. But once you realize you're being pinned, you could kick out of it. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. But you know, Natalia gets the win first page and. The, it seems like the Divas matches are getting shorter and shorter, except for the, the pay-per-view uh, WWE uh, Women's Divas 
title match. If, unless it's a title match, the matches last like two seconds. You know, they're wrestling around for about, not literally two seconds, but they're wrestling around for about ten seconds, like literally ten seconds, and then it gets interrupted by something, and then there to roll up pin. But whatever. Uh, then there's a segment where Triple H and Stephanie uh, present the new uh, WWE title to Brock Lesnar. Title title didn't look that much different than the the last uh, WWE Championship, not the World Heavyweight, but the actual WWE title. I guess it's called the WWE World Heavyweight Championship now. They should just call it the WWE Championship. I don't know why they make it more complicated than what it is, but. Um, yeah, it looked nice. Uh, uh, Lesnar and Heyman come out and basically talk about Heyman talks about how you know Brock Lesnar destroyed Cena, blah blah blah. You know, you heard it. Uh, then Ziggler faces The Miz in an Intercontinental Title rematch, which was not nothing special at all. Uh, Ziggler loses the match by count out, therefore retains the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, at least he retained it, at least they didn't give it right back to the Miz, so that's positive on that note. Uh, Swagger faces Cesaro. The match ends with uh, Cesaro poking Swagger in the eyes and using the neutralizer finisher and then pins him. Uh, I guess I guess they're going to be feuding now. Um, I guess. Oh yeah, and I forgot about this. Bo Dallas comes out, makes fun of Swagger for losing at SummerSlam. Tells him everything will be okay if he believes, of course. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if that means Swagger and Bo Dallas will be feuding. Bo Dallas really hasn't feuded with anyone, really. I mean, he's just kind of had a lot of random matches with uh, nobodies, really. Uh, Ryback, Rybaxel, Ryback, Curtis Axel, and Orton face RVD, Sheamus, and Roman Reigns in a uh, six-man tag match. Um... I wonder who uh, Reigns and Orton will be feuding with now. I wonder if that's going to continue or what. But RVD wins with the five-star frog splash and cut, gets the cover. Uh, I'm really not a big fan of six-man tags, tag matches, unless it's like uh, the Shield versus like the uh, the Wyatt family or something like that, like as an actual feud, because that's really just a way for them to have another match and have guys wrestle in a match. You know, just have they have a big tag match with all different feuds in it. You know, uh, the Usos face uh, Goldust and Stardust. Man, the whole Stardust thing just really is not working for me. I don't know. We're, we're I don't know really where they're gonna go with this. I mean, Cody Rhodes is plain. I think I've said this before. He's his original gimmick is really uh, bland, but they're really. Uh, I really don't see a point with Stardust. I mean, why make him an exact copy of Goldust? I mean, and I liked Goldust back in the day, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Stardust wins with a roll-up pin. The, inf the, the infinite roll-up pin, man. Greatest move in WWE history. Uh, Rusev and Lana come out to gloat about SummerSlam, but Mark Henry comes out. My man, Mark Henry. I wish he didn't cut his hair though. I like the way his hair looked back in the day. It looked like a damn uh, predator, predator gorilla type motherfucker. Uh, comes out, basically says he'll, he's going to induct uh, Rusev into the Hall of Pain, and basically, you know, stares him down, talking trash to him, and gives him the world's strongest slam. I assume there they will be feuding now, and that's good. For Rusev, if uh, if he's gonna get any kind of push, Mark Henry's a good guy for him to feud with. I think uh, you know uh, Rusev could actually learn a lot from Mark Henry. You know, not in terms of you know like real real life and really how to wrestle in the ring. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, Jerry Lawler announces that uh, Falls Count Anywhere matches. The stipulation that won uh, won the voting for the Seth Rollins Dean Ambrose match, and this match was actually really good. Uh, I thought it was a lot better than the actual <coughs> match they had at SummerSlam the other night. But 
man, I'm trying to remember what the hell even happened in this match. There was so much that happened. Uh, I remember how it ended, but I'm trying to remember what else happened. Well, they were wrestling basically all over the arena, and uh, Corporate Kane got involved uh, basically to help uh, Seth Rollins. Man, they really need to kill this corporate Kane crap. Just it just sounds stupid. Corporate Kane. That's already sounds like a bad idea, right? Right off the bat, Kane. They have absolutely destroyed. I think I've said this many times, but man, I can't express it enough. They have killed the character of Kane. Absolutely killed it. I mean, I can't. I can't take him seriously anymore. And he used to be like the big monster, like Michael Myers, Jason type character, which. People, I think, actually were kind of afraid of. I mean, he was just an awesome character back in the Attitude Era. But he should, I don't think he ever should have took his mask off. You know what I mean? I think that, like, the mystery behind that was so, you know, so, so good and so interesting. I think as soon as they took his mask off, <clears throat> you know, he started going downhill from that point. But still a, a future Hall of Famer and whatnot. Uh... Oh yeah, I remember something happening. Uh, Ambrose uh, gets like a million chairs from under the ring and tries to slam uh, Rollins onto it. Rollins reverses it and uh, power bombs his ass onto all the chairs. And that should have been the end of the match right there, but it wasn't. And uh, who got slammed through the? Uh, someone get slammed through the table? A table? I know someone got, I think Rollins got a table out. I can't remember who got slammed through it, though. If you can, if you remember, comment and remind me. I think Rollins got put through it somehow. But I may be mistaken on that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, I don't remember how he did it, but Ambrose put Rollins through it somehow. But yeah. Uh, and then uh, Kane tries to... Now I'm not I'm not sure on this. Kane tries to uh, choke slam uh, Ambrose through the announcer table, but I, I'm not sure if it's if it was supposed to break or if it's not supposed to break because the table the announcer table seem to be a lot more sturdy now. So you really got to slam the the fuck out of them to, for the table to actually break. But yeah, I'm not sure if it was supposed to or not, but. Uh, yeah, he he choke slammed him on it, and then uh, Rollins tries to curb stomp him on it, and it still doesn't break. And then Kane pulls off this like table type thing, and under it is uh, like a bunch of blocks of cement, and uh, Rollins curb stomps this finisher uh, on Dean Ambrose, and cement just shatters fake ass fucking submit obviously but uh yeah and then the ref uh calls the match ambrose was basically knocked the fuck out and therefore rollins wins and rollins just keeps getting the best of ambrose actually in the matches but outside the ring ambrose always is doing some shit to rollins but yeah <clears throat> I wonder how long this feud is actually going to go on. It's obviously still going on for. I want this. I, I, that could be the end of it now, but I don't think so. It could be the end from you know he's just messing them up too bad. Maybe Ambrose will be gone for a few weeks or something. Who knows? Uh, I like to see Rollins feud with someone else now. You know, really tired of the Ambrose feud. Uh, I don't know who I'd like to see him feud with, but. Maybe Cesaro or RVD or somebody like that. I think him and RVD would be a really interesting feud. But they're not taking RVD seriously right now, so I don't know what to say about that. Uh, you know, they're treating him like crap, which is so sad. But anyways, Ron gets the win, and that's how the sh the show ends with that uh that finisher with him sending Ambrose's head through the cement and. Raw tonight, uh, really good main event. I gotta give it credit on that. And other than that, pretty mediocre. Uh, Cena wasn't on there, which is uh, a not a good thing 
right now. Uh, I guess Cena and uh, Lesnar's feud will continue at Night of Champions. I guess they'll get a rematch. Hopefully Cena doesn't win. But, yeah, that's about it. That's all i got to say right now. Uh, I'll be back next week with my recap of Raw. And until next time, y'all take it easy.